Hello and welcome to South Asia Today, a show that provides you the glimpses of South Asia. I am your host Yeshi Chonsom. Here are the headlines. Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajpaksa visits New Delhi on its first maiden trip after assuming office. Supreme Court strikes down three-year extension of Bajwa, asks government to defend its decision in six months. And hundreds of domestic and international firms participate in Grand India International Trade Fair. Let's begin the show with newly appointed Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajpaksa's maiden state visit to India. The visit that was aimed at further deepening the strategic and trade ties between the two countries turned out to be fructiferous as both New Delhi and Colombo decided to work together in multiple spheres. Setting his priorities straight right at the beginning of his term, President Gotabaya Rajapaksa made his maiden visit to its closest neighbour, India, in just over 10 days after assuming office. His intentions of further enhancing the bilateral ties between the countries were adequately reciprocated as India rolled out red carpet for him at the presidential palace. He discussed a range of relations between New Delhi and Colombo with Indian Foreign Minister S. Jay Shankar. He committed to mend his outlook towards Tamil community in Sri Lanka and assured better opportunity for them in coming times. My expectations are very high uh, and I want to, during my tenure as the President, I want to uh, bring the relationship between uh, India and Sri Lanka into a very high level and uh, at the same time uh, we need to work together uh, for the benefit of uh, India as well as Sri Lanka and people of Sri Lanka and on security as well as the economic development. Gotabaya discussed a host of ties with Prime Minister Narendra Modi. He discussed the situation in the Indian Ocean region and steps to boost trade and investment ties. Appreciating Gotabaya's decision of picking India as his first foreign destination, Modi said that New Delhi will continue to work with Colombo for a prosperous future of two countries and the region. Dono deshon ki pragati aur hamare is pure saaja kshetra mein shanti, samruddhi aur suraksha ke liye hum Rashtrapati Rajpaksh ke saath ganishth rup se kaam karne ke liye tatpar hai. Sri Lanka has long been a priority destination for direct investment from India. While Sri Lanka is one of India's largest trading partners among the SAR countries, India in turn is Sri Lanka's largest trade partner globally. Trade between the two countries grew particularly rapidly after the India-Sri Lanka Free Trade Agreement, which came into force in March 2000. India and Sri Lanka have had extraordinary ties for decades, but they received minor hiccups when the leadership got close to Beijing. However, Gotabaya, ever since he was a presidential candidate, has said that he will improve ties with India. Moving on, US President Donald Trump made a surprise Thanksgiving visit to US troops in Afghanistan. In his second ever visit to a war zone, Trump said that peace talks with the Taliban have resumed. Trump also discussed the deal prospects with Afghan President Ashraf Ghani, who later informed that a ceasefire and the dismantling of terror camps on Afghan soil were two major and common demands of Kabul and Washington. We have a report. Presidential plane Air Force One touched down at the Bagram Air Base as US President Donald Trump made his first and surprise visit to Afghanistan. The visit that came just a week after the successful prisoner swap between the Taliban and Kabul was seemingly aimed at securing the opportunity of once again negotiating with the Taliban. While appreciating the efforts of the US forces, Trump said that Taliban wanted to make a deal with them. The Taliban wants to make a deal. We'll see if they want to make a deal. It's got to be a real deal, but we'll see. But they want to make a deal. And they only want to make a deal because you're doing a great job. That's the only reason they want to make a deal. Since his days as presidential candidate, 
Trump has wanted to end U.S. involvement in Afghanistan and on several occasions expressed his urge of calling his troops back. He reassured the soldiers that he would call them back and the technology will take care of the enemy at the ground. Weeks ago, we also announced that the um, forces are coming back. They're coming back home. We're reducing over here, but because of technology and all of the things that we have, we're able to reduce in Afghanistan, very substantially actually reduce, and do even more devastating attacks on the enemy. So that's part of the two and a half trillion that we have coming. Trump also held bilateral talks with Afghan President Ashraf Ghani, in which he discussed the key bargaining issues of ceasefire and the use of Afghan territory to launch militant attacks on the United States. Ghani, who has been rebuffed by the Taliban, disclosed the nuances of the meeting on social media. While Trump has not provided a specific number of troops leaving Afghanistan in the coming future, US military has said before that 8,600 troops are enough to carry out essential counter-terrorism operations in the country. In spite of the president being optimistic, Many U.S. officials still doubt the Taliban could be relied upon to prevent Al-Qaeda from again plotting attacks against the United States from the Afghan soil. Supreme Court of Pakistan has struck down Imran Khan government's decision of giving a three-year extension to the Army Chief Kamar Javed Bajwa. The court, which has given a six-month temporary extension to the general, has also said that the government must pass legislation through parliament in that time to clarify the section of Pakistan's constitution governing the armed forces. In a major setback to Pakistan army and its generals, who hold great sway in country's discourse, the Apex court has deemed three-year extension to Kamar Javed Bajwa invalid. While the court has granted a relief to General by granting him a six-month extension, it has also asked the government to defend its decision, which it said was loaded with irregularities. The Supreme Court said that it would be liberal in handling the case, which it could have handled sternly. The court has also asked the government to make necessary amendments in the Army Act and come up with legislation in order to make appointments democratic and legal. Today, the Supreme Court of Pakistan took uh, up the case pertaining to the appointment of the Pakistan Army Chief, which is one of the most, most important and most sensitive appointments in Pakistan. And they have uh, uh, concluded in a manner that the parliament has been directed to enact law to regulate the terms and conditions of the services of Pakistan Army Chief uh, and also uh, he has been given extension for six months uh, under, the, uh, under the ongoing practice under the uh, army uh, laws and meanwhile parliament has been directed to enact a small, uh, uh, legislation to regulate the... Prime Minister Imran Khan, who has widely been criticized for playing stooge to the army headquarters in Rawalpindi, hailed the verdict, saying it was the defeat of those who were expecting Pakistan to be destabilized by the clash of institutions. However, the gesture is confusing as the decision was pronounced against his own government. It is his administration which wants to see Bajwa as top army commander. The army chief usually serves a three-year term. Since the role was established in 1972, only one general has had its term extended by a civilian government. Government backs Bajwa, citing his efficiency at handling military crisis and expertise in Kashmir region. But during his tenure, the military has been accused by opposition politicians of electoral manipulation, meddling in politics, suspension of civil liberties 
and muzzling the media to help Khan win power last year. People across various sections of the society have expressed the violence unleashed under the commands of Bajwa. They say that their lands and resources have been snatched on instructions of the army general. ये पौजी जिधर भी जुप हाड़ में सोना औरते उधर ही आते हैं कब्जा करते दस दिनों में तालिब पैदा हो जाएगा टारगेट हो जाएगा फिर तो लोग मजबूर करते हैं वो जबरदस्ती से निकालते ये नहीं कहा आराम जबरदस्ती से निकालते और हजार बार उन्होंने असरफ गपूर ने भी कहा बजवा ने भी कहा कि हमने ऑपरेशन किया कहा मैं ऑपरेशन था रास्ता यानी जो कबली रही तो क्लियर हो गया तो आज के उन लोग उधर मरते हैं Pakistan's powerful military has ruled the country for more than half of its 72-year history and sets defense and security policy. Although the decision has provided some kind of reprieve to the government, the episode could weaken the authority of the coalition government led by Khan's Pakistan Tehreek in Saf party that now has to pass what is likely to be complex legislation on the military through parliament. Moving on, a gun-wielding Islamabad has exploited the illegally occupied territories of Gilgit Baltistan and POK for more than seven decades. Intimidation and immoral legislations have been Pakistan's primary tools in the endeavors of subjugating the locals. When it comes to freedom of expression, even a hint of dissent is crushed with severe high-handedness. However, the locals are mounting a strong resistance against the establishment and it has escalated notches since Pakistan unleashed violence on peaceful demonstrators on 22nd of October. A report. The illegally occupied Gilgit Baltistan and POK have been hit by sweeping protests against Pakistani misrule in these territories. The protests, which sparked in the wake of the state agency's high-handedness on peaceful demonstration on 22nd of October, have gathered huge traction amongst the masses and have transformed into one of the biggest dissents popping up from the region. While an anti-establishment anger was always prevalent in the region, the emotion is unprecedented this time and people say they will not withdraw unless their demands are met. Even the exiled activists of the region have lent their support, calling for independence. On October 22nd, when the People's National Alliance, which is 26 parties and groups and individuals, is a democratic alliance, when they called the call in Muzaffarabad, कि हम मुजफ्फराबाद जाएंगे और वहाँ पे अपने मुतालबात रखेंगे तो विद इन आवर्स उनके ऊपर इतना शदीद लाठी चार्ज किया और उसकी वीडियोस मौजूद है जिसमें आप देख सकते हैं कि बाय स्टैंडर्ड्स को पुलिस वालों ने पीछे से लाठियाँ मार के उनको बेहोश किया चार लोग वहाँ पे शहीद हुए डेढ़ सौ से ज़्यादा लोगों को गिरफ़्तार किया सौ से ज़्यादा लोगों को डिसपियर किया वहाँ से और उन्होंने फिर जब प्रेस क्लब में उनकी क्यादत जो थी उसने जाके वहाँ पे अपनी जान बचाने की कोशिश की तो पुलिस ने प्रेस क्लब पर हमला कर दिया। People in Gilgit Baltistan and POK are deprived of the fundamental rights. They do not have access to basic amenities and their land and resources have been snatched through illegal exercises of Pakistan. Many of them have been forced to leave their ancestral homes after establishment marked it for state use. Prime Minister of Pakistan, who was widely criticized in his own country for playing second fiddle to army generals when it comes to framing and executing policies, is a self-proclaimed protector and supporter of these people. However, the locals have rejected his claim, saying the situation has further worsened under his bid at ruling the region. Pakistani occupied Kashmir and Gilgit-Baltistan, 
मुझे ये बताएं कि कितना इंसाफ दिया है इमरान खान ने या आज तक की किसी भी पाकिस्तानी गवर्नमेंट ने हमारे इस वक्त जो दोस्त हैं वो गिलगित की जेलों में गाकोत जेलों में सत्तर सत्तर साल की उनको सजाएं दी हैं सिर्फ एनवायरनमेंट बेस्ड कैंपेन्स चलाने पे जो चाइना जो माइंस हमारी ख़रीदना चाहता था उसके ख़िलाफ़ जो प्रोटेस्ट हुए हैं लोकल आबादी के उनको अरेस्ट करके उन्होंने जेलों में डाला है और उनको चालीस चालीस साल सत्तर सत्तर साल और एक को नब्बे साल की सजा दी है The growing resentment in the region has set the alarm bells ringing for Pakistan as it might transform into a full-fledged rebellion if Pakistan, which is deemed occupier by the locals, does not give in to people's demands. And the demands are nothing but vacating the territory that Islamabad has occupied for 72 long years. Now we take a look at some happenings in Asia in our segment called Asia Watch. Haneda International Airport in Tokyo acts as an entry point for many tourists in Japan. On the upper floor of its departure area, Japanese souvenir shops and restaurants draw a lot of attention. Big Camera's consumer electronics store called Air Big Camera which is located at popular places in Japan attracts many foreign consumers. Big Camera store at the airport makes it easy for foreign tourists to find many products at the airport. The original sticker of the Big Camera is attached to made in Japan product. え、お客様が都内のビッグカメラでご購入した商品をお客様のフライトに一定に合わせて当然にお送りすることのできる空港配送システムがございます。え、ネットで見かけた商品を当店の方でピックアップのできるネットレトリオキのシステムがございます。China continued to decrease its overall level of carbon dioxide emissions, reversing the trend of rapid growth. according to a report published by the country's environment ministry China's carbon dioxide emissions per unit GDP dropped 4% in 2018 a cumulative decrease of 45.8% over the 2005 level and equivalent to a reduction of 5.26 billion tons of carbon dioxide Non-fossil energy accounted for 14.3% of China's total energy consumption, basically reversing the rapid growth of carbon dioxide emissions. As the largest developing country, China has always firmly supported multilateralism, implemented its commitments towards its national conditions and laid a solid foundation for the full and effective implementation of the Paris Agreement. Dancers wearing Japanese kimono and Indonesian traditional costumes performed at the launch of JCB BCA joint venture to launch a credit card. BCA or Bank Central Asia is the leading financial company in Indonesia. It has not only contributed to the economic development but has also raised people's living standard in Indonesia. Officers of both companies exchanged costumes for each other at the launching ceremony. I'm also honored to wear the Indonesian traditional costume like this. Thank you. I love this. I like to experience and understand Indonesian culture more and contribute to the good relationship between Indonesia and Japan. We provide JCB unique special offers for shopping and dining which are available to customers at travel destination around the world. Fusion of shopping tools and collaboration of Japanese and Southeast Asian countries make shopping and traveling more convenient and enjoyable. The Indian mission in Kathmandu marked 17 years of promulgation of Indian constitution 
by organizing a function that was attended by more than 500 people. The program was attended by the chief of the Indian mission to Nepal, Manjeev Singh Puri, and deputy head of the mission, Ajay Kumar, along with other senior officials working at the embassy as well as the students from the Kendriya Vidyalaya in Kathmandu. The program started with taking oath of the Indian constitution by the officials working in the Indian mission as well as the students who were present there. The constitution of India is a very unique document. It's one of the few documents in the world which has tried to bring together federal aspects as well as a strong unifying central force. Numerous performances were also held within the premises of the Indian mission to celebrate the occasion. The Constitution of India, one of the longest written constitutions of the world, was adopted on November 26, 1949. It constitutes of a preamble, 22 parts, with 395 articles and 8 schedules. Moving on. India recently hosted 39th edition of India International Trade Fair 2019, one of the largest trade fairs in the world both in terms of exhibitors and visitors. Over 800 firms from across India and overseas participated in this memote event, making it a unique display altogether. Let's take a look. Ritzy pavilions, excited visitors and a unique variety of items from across the world. This is what defined the beauty of India International Trade Fair 2019. The mega event, organized by India Trade Promotion Organization, saw a participation of around 3,000 exhibitors from almost 19 countries. The overwhelming participation from abroad is an indication of the strengthening of foreign relations and the growing integration of India with the global economy. Ranging from the beautiful gems and bracelets from Iran to the traditional carpets of Afghanistan, the International Pavilion had much more to attract the visitors. I am representing the Afghan carpets here in uh, IATPO 2019 and uh, we are getting a very good response from the Indian crowd and then uh, hopefully we are looking forward to you know, um, uh, bring more exclusive Afghan carpets to the Indian market. What I what I'm carrying here right now is flatted weaving and pi, uh, this pile weaving. Flatted weaving is called as kilim. So you can see this. This is a kilim, and it is called as flatted weaving, and uh, it comes from the northern province of Afghanistan, Herat. And then uh, people are liking too much here. The theme for the 2019 edition of the fair was ease of doing business. The theme was also put forward to all the Indian states and union territories that showcase their products during the fair. This year, the status of partner country has been accorded to the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan and the Republic of Korea as a focus country. Visitors were seen enjoying various attractions and purchasing handicraft items and other products. I come to know about this stall. This is really very good and prices are very reasonable and uh, stuff is very good. People are very cooperative over here and we are buying this stuff and we are thankful to this, these people, those they are giving us great sarees. We are visiting Pr Pragati Medan. It's a very beautiful place and uh, the Afghani stalls here are uh, very good and the products which they are selling, that is exquisite. And I'm astonished by seeing all the uh, uh, dry fruits over here. Traders from Australia, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Afghanistan, Nepal, Thailand, Turkey and Vietnam displayed their products at the fair. The India International Trade Fair provides a reliable and tested platform to small and medium enterprises, exporters, entrepreneurs and investors. It is the largest integrated trade fair with business to business and business to consumer components. It's time for me to wrap up today's episode. We'll be back next week at the same time. This is Yeshi Chonsom signing off from the entire production team of South Asia today. Goodbye and take care.